Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about The Leftovers Season 2, Episode 6, it's called Lens, so full spoilers for the episode as always. So, this, uh, again, very focused episode, We, we yep. this time we're, we're on Nora, we're on Erica and it's kind of those two sort of intertwining, for, for a very good reason as well, because the stories are very sort of parallel in terms yep. of what they're going through. Because uh, Eric, in a lot of ways, is kind of just starting to go through what Nora already went through, uh, you know, once upon a time back in the, the first departure. Uh, and a lot of Nora's fears about this being a departure, can there be more depa- departures, uh, all of that kind of came back up. Although, of course, the best thing about this episode is that I think it's the third one in a row now with no mention of Australia in any capacity. And uh, that's good. I mean, it's true, but it's still coming. Aye. But, to, but to what extent? That, that's the that's the true question. Uh, that is we'll the see. question. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, annoyingly, I can see it been the exact right amount that we're both completely like half right. Uh, that would be annoying, wouldn't and it? That's going to be annoying because and you neither of us can be smug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want the smug. That's that's that's, 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 what, that's my goal in life to be smug. That's it. I I think the viewers want smugness as well. They don't care which of us. They just want one of us to get to be smug. Yeah, but they know which one it's going to be. And that, that, uh, I... Not necessarily. Someone might be watching along with us. Oh, sure, but most of them probably know which one it's going to be, and that's, probably. that's infuriating. Yeah. It's like they're, the they're, the they're, they're laughing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> but who are they laughing at? That's the, it could be, could be both of us, yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, so... <laughs> so... Uh, let's, let's dive in. So, uh, we actually opened with this this sort of uh, montage of this character we've never seen before. Um, mm. Who was. I was getting like a sort of gruff version of Tommy Wiseau from this guy. Now that you mention it, I can see it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want Tommy Wiseau on the leftovers now. Uh, no, you don't. I kind of do. I want Tommy Wiseau talking about departures. No, I bet he departed. <laughs> Having Gary course. Busey. Him and Gary Busey at the party. Oh, that's it. <laughs> but he, we get this this montage, and it's him, uh, sort of like we see him in a lab. He's clearly some kind of scientist, and he packs up his stuff. He's like, you know, he's making frantic calls. We can't really hear what he's saying. You're not really supposed to. The music starts to overpower him, mm-hmm. and he c- comes in his way. We see he's coming to Miracle. He gets sent on a on a research kind of pass to get into the, into the town. Uh, he buys a little golf well, not, not buy. I'm sure he doesn't buy, but he rents a little golf cart to get around town. Um, and he he gets to gets to the, the you know the, the Murphy household, uh, and he's basically not not greeted very well. Although it's it's almost impress it's, it's almost much more generous a meeting than when he, what he's about to have with Nora when he yeah. goes up and he yeah. starts ask. And the first thing is, is I knew when he went to chat the door the first one that the music was probably going to stop as soon as the door opened. It just it yeah. felt like we're, we're building to this. Like, what is this person? Why is he here? But he's coming to see our characters. Uh, and we never actually see him again. And But obviously the, the point here is that... Uh, so it turns out to be a scientist, but the, I think the point is to show that this is how much they're willing to go. This guy travels from out of town. This guy like comes all this way. He brings all this equipment just to talk to these people. Um, and you can tell he obviously is researching stuff about the departure, but he, he comes up to Nora and he starts asking these questions. Uh, about when she, when she moved into the house, what date was it? Yeah. Uh, and you, you you immediately get what he's getting at, like, oh, you came to this town and then these girls disappeared. Like, are you somewhere responsible? And this obviously feeds exactly into her, into her kind of guilt that she used to have about like her being the problem. So yeah. combine that with the fear that she now has that it could happen again. That's like so I, th- I think this was a wonderful sequel actually to her episode in season one. And the fact was that even like there's a, a great, great callback. Yeah, there's a PayPal, uh, yeah. which is a fantastic which, little callback to it. But. It is, and I, I thought that was actually uh, a really good moment because obviously that was the moment where she kind of got over that guilt, or it seemed that she'd got over that guilt. Yeah, at least temporarily. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whereas now it's it's like, okay, maybe not. Yeah, so there's all those there's people try to give her new reasons for being guilty. We hear about a lot of things in this episode to kind of back up the idea that she maybe not that she should feel guilty, but like the hinting hinting that she is responsible in some way. We hear, I mean, obviously the episode titles lens, and we hear about this because uh, someone from the uh, the DSD I have to think about the acronym uh, 
there's this guy who's like he's a friendly guy, but he's he's there to speak to speak to the Murphys. He's there to speak to Erica, and Erica's not having it. And Nora runs into him, and he's like, "Oh, I'm from the DSD," and they kind of like, "Oh, I do, you know, I work there." And it's like it kind of, and I think it's kind of fun that this this all comes back up again when she's feeling guilty again, and when like we have, we're back to her episode, it kind of brings back what she used to be into it. Yeah. Uh, and he, you know, it's not small talk, and he's there to like cover uh, what he calls secondaries, which you know, obviously, is the idea that some people may have departed since the Great Departure. Yeah, I think I think Norma mentioned that she used to be in secondaries. You know, that that was when she spoke that that story to Jill. Uh, yeah, at least it's partly she, she definitely moved on from that though. When we've seen her working, right? She in moved into yeah. the the insurancey bit, but I think she yeah. was in secondaries before that. Um, but. Oh, so, so she ends up going to see him. She she she, she tells him some directions to get to like a, some somewhere to eat. He's, he's hungry. He wants breakfast, and she ends up showing up at the the restaurant, just you know faking that it's by chance that yeah. she's seeing him. Yeah, but, real real casual. Yeah, uh, I'm waiting in takeout. You never see her going to get a takeout. I'd be suspicious if I was him. Some weird stalking mm. activity going on here, but she she sort of prides for information and she learns a couple of things. One that there's some new questions about that go on the, the questionnaire. And two, that the other parents that he's already spoke to, the other two girls that have disappeared, um, none of the 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 flags that have usually show up that they, they see as indicating as a fake or it's not a departure or it's something else. Yeah. None of them have flagged up yet. So that of course makes her worry. And she's, it, it almost feels like throughout the entire episode that Nora's constantly trying to ask the questions that dispel her fear that this is an all departure. Yeah, she wants it to be fraud. Yeah. And that's when, so we get to this idea of lensing, uh, and she eventually asks for a, a link to the, the, the newsletter, or whatever it is that these people pass around uh, with this theory, but it's the idea that uh, the people who are still here um, k- kind of like magnify, like something to do with ultraviolet rays, he says, <laughs> but basically the idea that uh, they they made other people more susceptible to being departed, to being taken, or yeah, have you but unintentionally, it? of course. Un- yeah, unintentionally. Um, but that, of course, is planting that seed. Like, is she responsible? Because her entire family went. Is she, like, you know, one of these right, lenses turned she up? she was in the room. And, and you can say the same for, for Kevin, with, the, you know, the, the woman that he was having sex with at the time. Oh, yeah, sure. He's not concerned, though, so... Right, right. Uh, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, like it actually, yeah. it does... You, you could see why it lines up. Like, all the people that we see, this, a lot of them were in close proximity to others. Yeah, I mean... A lot of the disappearances that we saw were, because, you know, you, you don't really hear about any disappearances that just happened, you know, like, with with no one around. It, it you know, We've not really heard much about those. Which is why I assume this theory has, has come up. I imagine it had to be, though. There, there probably was some, but... I, I, I'm just... Oh, I'm, like, there there like, must have been. Yeah, but, like... I mean, does the person even have to have been there at the time? Like, I was, I was kind of getting the pressure no. for us. It was just more about they've been around that person. No, all right, okay. Which made more sense to me because I, I wasn't necessarily thinking that they all had someone around at the time. Right, okay. Because just depending on where they were at that time of the day. Yeah, yeah. they could have been anywhere. So, uh, but so she's like, oh, forward that to me, and she's obviously she wants to see the new questions. She's she's very curious about these new questions, mm-hmm. uh, but he doesn't. It's, for my indication, though, when we actually get to read them later on, they never actually point out what the new ones are. But to me, it sounded like all the new questions were the ones that were like it was like the, they asked it again, but for the person they were talking to. Yeah, we never got that before when yeah. she was asking questions. Yeah, I got the impression that was the thing, and that was kind of tied to this lensing thing. It was like, okay, I need to know about you as well to see if you're affecting this other stuff. So right, uh, that, that was the impression I got. Um, but we see she's in a you know obviously the, the she gets she. she Shouts at the guy. She doesn't want to be spoken to. Someone from the same place calls her. She, you know, tells them to f off. Hangs up. Uh, and it's when she gets called back again, and the woman's like, "No, please, just listen to me." Like, we, like he was very rude. He's not a people person. Let me just explain what we were looking for, and um, and you know, because maybe they have some sort of valid thing to look into. But eventually, she does bring up lensing, and she's like, "Yeah, we think you're a lens." But then she explains what what she thinks that actually means. Yeah, and she, she she asks why. Yeah. <laughs> And the woman over the phone says, "We believe the demon Azrael is inside you. You're a disciple of him, doing his." And, uh, and at that point, and quite rightly, Nora starts to like, be like, wait a minute, this is bullshit. I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna, she starts laughing almost, and I'm sitting there giggling, like I couldn't believe the words, "the demon I, I, of Azrael." I, I, I wasn't expecting, yeah, 
you're, you're a host for Azrael. I was like, oh god, what is what, what is this bullshit? And it's almost like this again. She's looking for relief, and hearing how absurd this sounds makes her feel better. Because mm, it's like, yeah. oh wait, this is not as bad. But we see that she she actually throws a a rock through the Murphy's window at yeah. the start of the episode, um, which is is interesting because like the motivation for that, like I, I think at first you're like, well. A, is, is she just being resentful because of everything that happened with Matt? Even though throughout the rest of the episode, she's putting on this face like, no, that yeah, was... she says she isn't. Yeah, but I, th- like, I, I think that's what it is. Yeah, because yeah. she says, oh yeah, the daughter's missing, but we're still going to this fundraiser to, for you know for helping to search for her. Like, because this is what everything's building up to in the episode is that they're going to have this fundraiser, and to the point where even Kevin's like, oh, we're going to that. I mean, they did just kind of like you know kick Matt out of the town. It's like, yeah, yeah he kicked himself out. Like we we. Like you know, daughters are lost. We should do it. We should be neighbourly, um, uh, because I, I think the reason why that 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 plays so it's like one of these weird moments with Nora that we've seen in season one where she'll do something completely on its own and then it'll not be referenced largely yeah. for a long time. And that, that, that if it kind of feels like season one Nora almost to me. So it's kind of interesting that that combined with the bringing back in the DSD, bringing back in her guilt, all these things kind of. Yeah, coming back it, to it, it is these these themes and things that we had from her before are yeah. kind of all coming to a head again now. Yeah, but they, they give her reasons to for why she's worried about all this stuff again. So yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so. I, I loved early on with Nora is is the moment where I realised it was a Nora episode because mm. you know at first I was like, okay, it could just be a, a family episode. Yeah, it could or, be everyone. It's the moment where she goes up to see Kevin, and obviously he's still handcuffed to the bed. Although I have to admit, at first I thought the the intention was they were handcuffed to each other. Well, I think they are until she gets up first and she just. Okay, so, okay, I guess that worked. Yeah, because like, obviously but... she wants to get up and do stuff, but he's still asleep, so she'll just yeah, take yeah. it off and put it on the bed. Right, but obviously it's it's the moment where he clearly sees Patty, but mm. we don't see Patty. Like we're yeah, not we in Patty. Kevin's head today. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, because he covers it up with a cramp. He's like, oh, I had a cramp. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, we, I, I'm. We... Con- I'm convinced we're going to like, maybe not the next episode, but we're going to get Kevin's side of this day. Because mm. because he eventually builds to a big decision to tell, to tell yeah. Nora at the end of the episode, and I feel like we have to see his his side of that. Why why does he get to that point? And yeah, we it? we got snippets and saw him kind yeah. of rain down like the things that Nora would notice as well, but not enough to yeah. really get in his. Like I say, that was the moment where I was like, oh, we're not in Kevin's head this episode. Yeah, that, but this, this is, isn't yeah. his. And quite quickly, I realised as well that it was equally Erica's episode. It was going to be the two yeah. of them, and they converge at the end. Uh, but even before that point, it, you can tell thematically why they're, they're, they're sort of dealt with together in this episode because they're both dealing with this 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 idea of being guilty, the survivor's yeah. guilt, which is very unique in this sense because it's you know this they suddenly just disappeared, and at least she's at the point where she believes Evie disappeared. Like there's no proof of it yet. No, well, but she's convinced. There likely never will be proof of it, really. Like you know. No, how, how can you prove? I mean, they can that... say a list of questions prove it, but it doesn't really like. No, it, of course. That's all just like analytics and a best guess based yeah. on comparing it to things. But honestly, it's a like, statistical probability. Yeah, but probabilities are not certainties, certainly. Of not. So, um, so sticking with Nora for now, we'll, we'll jump over to. Well, obviously, we'll get to Nora up until the point where they converge. We'll go to Erica, and then we'll we'll jump back. Yeah. We'll jump to the, the scene at the end once we wrap up both. Um, so they go to the. Well, actually, first she goes and visits Matt, uh, and Matt's even like, "You going to you going to their fundraiser? They mm. kicked me out the town." She didn't, he didn't say that, but I was getting that sort he's of thinking vibe. It. He's, which is it's very unmatt like. Yeah, it's kind of unmatt. It's, 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 it's strange to see him kind of hold a grudge. He's also he's also become a big hit in this uh, outer. He, he, yeah, he's he's the hero of this town basically. Yeah, apparently he got out of the. Which, by the way, Nora called them stocks. So I don't, I, look, I know that's what people call it. It's still wrong. That's fair, I, but I Nora, didn't I'm didn't Google the right name because I should have done. But I'm saying that we are in in the universe with the show. We are agreeing with Nora that they're called stocks, so it's okay. Yeah, I'll let I'll let it slide. But uh, so yeah, so he's a little bit confrontational, and he's like, "Oh, did Mary wake up?" And like, nah, and you know, because obviously Mary's around here because they're, they're taking care of Mary. So we see, you know, a little bit of the yeah. daily routine of like getting her up and helping. And that stuff, um, but so simple, simple little scene shows show you where Matt is right now, uh, and then then we do get to the the fundraiser where she you know she meets up, she she goes with Mary, Kevin's got the baby, they meet up, they go in. Uh, Jill's there of course with uh, with Michael, she's uh, went there as his date, <laughs> so they're they're clearly a little bit further along uh, than we've not last seen them. It's kind of happening off screen, which is cool. 
Um, yeah, you just got like that little one seat. You you saw him asking her, hmm. but, but like without you didn't you didn't hear any of it. You just kind of you saw Erica just see it. Yeah, yeah, and now Angel tells tells Nora, and she's like, "Oh, what, what do his parents think?" Uh, I don't think he's mentioned it to them, and I'm not really asking you either. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, "It's fair. You kind of, you're old enough to not have to ask to go on a date." I mean, that's 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 fair, but. Um, and again, it's more of her being a bit more mature and independent. Like, because even Ellen, the episode, she gets up and Nora's like, "Oh, I didn't get sleep well." She's like, "Oh, no, I'll feed Mary. Like, you go back, you go back to bed for a bit." Like, you know, yeah, she's she's still being very helpful. Yeah, still don't trust her. You don't trust her. No, I'm waiting for something to go wrong with her. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I I think she's turned over a new leaf. I, I've been very into what, what they've done with Jill's character just in terms of how they grow up. I mean, admittedly, she's not had as much to do this season because she is kind of just okay. <laughs> and because yeah. of that, there's less to, to do with it's her. It's almost boring, in a sense. I wouldn't say boring. It's just... It just doesn't really have her own plot this season. And that, that's kind of okay. Like, it's focusing on a lot of stuff. It's been very tight in what it's been Make, doing. It makes me wonder what's going to go wrong to give her a plot again next season. Because mm. I feel like they have to. What I do really like so far, though, is I like that most of her interactions this season have been with Nora. They it, have. There's, it's 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 pretty much been related to just Nora and Kevin, really. For the most part, yeah. Uh, there's been very few occasions that's been outside of those two, though. But, I mean, we, we could get an episode focused on her, in a, like an episode or two at a time. We could. We see, could. She, she might have something else go, that goes on this season. I'd say we, we don't see what she does during the day. We know she's been spending time with Michael to some extent. Presumably she still goes to school. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but we, that, we, do, uh, we don't actually know what she does. Um, I was going to offer a guess, but maybe I, I don't think I will. I've got nothing funny to guess, so I'm not going to. I wanted to bring up some way, but oh well, here we are. Uh, so they go to the, the thing, and while there's like a musical montage playing of like yeah photographs and stuff of the girls, and they're you know, on stage... Uh, Nora's like, oh, uh, conveniently, you know, choosing to sit behind the guy from the DSD. Mm. It's like looking down at the bag, and she sort of leans over and starts to, you know, sneak into it. Well, also the music's playing, it's quite loud, no one's really paying attention. Obviously, Kevin is seeing this, and he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like sort of nudging yeah. her. Like, what are you doing? Stop it. And she's like, eh, thing, just, you know, you watch You watch him. the presentation. Go get, Go be sad. Uh, well, he's, he's just sort of staring at the guy after that. He's like, please don't turn around. Please don't turn around. <laughs> uh, but she, she, she... And I was like, I thought she was just going to look at it and put it back at first because I thought, well, he's going to notice they're missing if you just take them. Like, yeah. and, you know, take, but she does. Uh, maybe we'll see fallout from that. Maybe we won't. Maybe that'll just be something that happens off screen. Um, but... Uh, so, no. Now, obviously, this scene is much more Erica's scene. That's, that's, Erica has a, a bigger portion of the scene. Yeah. She has a big kind of like tipping point. Here, yeah. So, so we'll 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 go back to we'll jump back to Erica now uh, to see throughout the episode. I really like how they're they're playing with her, uh, you yes. know, her her hearing. Yes. yes. I mean, she's not got her hearing aid in, uh, especially when she catches the the kid leaving the pie. Yeah. And she and goes she just, running, and it's all and we silent. Have that extended. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, just, it, it's just muffled. You hear like a little bit of noise, and you actually think something bad may happen. Like she may get hit by a car. She's, I was waiting for it. Yeah. Like, oh, she's not gonna. Hit, she's so focused on the kid. She's not gonna hear the car coming. Yeah. And you know, it plays with that. It's it's aware of those expectations. Yeah, it plays with it. She almost gets hit. Uh, she does catch the guy, and she's like, "Oh, you know, speak slowly." Obviously, she's reading these lips, so she's like, "Speak slowly, so I can understand what you're saying." Uh, and it turns out to be Virgil, uh, hmm. to who she she goes to see, and. Interesting dialogue here. Uh, it definitely is heavily implying. At first, I was thinking, okay, so this is this is her father, because he makes a point of saying it's still I'm still family too. Um, however, I think I think it's equally possible that it's uh, it's John's father. I think the one bit of evidence that I will add towards her father mm. is he he asks about he offers her a bird, like a wooden bird, and that, that would yeah that's that, that's fair. Um, Although I'm going but, to suggest that that could be, remember like last episode or whatever many episodes ago with Nora, he knew things. Like I'm wondering if he just knows what she's know. doing with the birds. It, it could be. Uh, the The reason I actually think it's more likely to be John is it goes back to something you said. I think it was last episode about you know how uh, John and Kevin are on the similar similar fathers, parallel line. Crazy, yeah. yeah. And I think it, you know the the whole idea that Kevin is afraid of the voices and becoming his father, and. 
is, is John afraid of the same? Like, is he afraid of having his psychic power? Whatever, you know, whatever it is, is he yeah. afraid of that the, from the same as his father? The other thing is, um, obviously, there's this confrontation, and he's done something bad that he like. Because Mike, when it, when when she confronts Michael about it in the next scene, when they're getting ready to go out, she's like, you, "You've been going to see with him. You're going to going to pray with him." And he's like, "He deserves to be forgiven." And she's like, no, not no, not him. It's like, not anyone does. Anyone who asks, you know, he's been very. Yeah, uh, and and he says, you know, uh, John shoot him again. Yeah, he, he references that John shot him at one point, and it makes me it makes me think it's more likely to be John's father, be, or because mainly, just the idea that she went and confronted him. I feel like John's the one who hates him more, and to me yeah. that says it's his father. If that yeah. makes sense. Is Alicia, uh, she hates him too, but she she because she's not the actual child and she's slightly outside of it, she can go and see him and confront him. Uh, right. So that's how I feel about it. It was kind I, of the I idea that if, if John finds out that Michael's been coming to see you, he'll do much worse than I. You know, shoot oh, him yeah, again. De- definitely. <laughs> and I think that's going to play into you know we were discussing last episode what happened to John to make him this way. Oh yeah, it'll be his father. It's yeah. definitely to do with Virgil. I can see but, it. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that after after this. Whatever whatever that event was that made him shoot him. I'm yeah, I'm curious. I'm deeply uh, curious I, I, about you've this. Gotta, you've got to want to know why the hell did you shoot him? Yeah. But and whatever course, it was, I'm sure it was that. We see more Erica's like day job. Once again, she's treating the guy that was in the first episode of the season who was getting the water at the, the, the lake. Yeah. And he's been beat up by John and his cronies and it's basically like he was selling bottles of this water that he'd already collected for $500 per Milliliter. Was it per milliliter? Oh, that's yeah. a lot. That, that adds up. Because one milliliter is not a lot of water. <laughs> it's not. And but uh, I mean, like he says, hey, they want to pay for it, so it's only worth what you want. Yeah. But the notable thing is that he took his handprint, and it's you yeah. can tell us there's a bit of a witch hunt mentality going on. Uh, and when Erica confronts John, like obviously she with with the guy, she's like, look, don't report this because you're just going to he's just going to come after you again. It's it's this weird kind of and even the fact that the little nurse or the little doctor says to her like, you better go deal with this patient. Because she yeah, knows they all it's... know. Yeah, yeah, um, and and she's not excusing John's behaviour. She's not saying, "Oh, don't report him," because you know she doesn't want him to be reported because that would be bad for him. It's like you know this this will be worse for you if you do. It's just it seems yeah. genuinely out of concern. Yeah, partly out of concern. Partly, I mean, I, I actually kind of just believe her when she's like, "Like, I've got plans tonight. Don't don't ruin yeah. them because she's going to come after you." Like, I actually kind of believe there's just a a level of genuine. In oh, that statement. Uh, it, it, regardless, it's not about trying to protect John. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, we find out later she was going to leave him before right. Evie disappeared. We see that she wasn't happy the way he's doing things, and in the next scene when she confronts him about this, she's like, "Oh, you took his handprint. That's not you know you're hitting people because you need to hit them." Like she she thinks he's starting to cross a line with what he's doing, and perhaps burning into the house was maybe this like. But uh, well, she was already going to leave him anyway, so maybe he was already you know starting to go over a line for her. Where he was like doing things that she just wasn't yeah. willing to live but, with, and obviously she's in the same way that we've seen Nora's very afraid for her safety in a, a metaphysical sense. Mm. Erica's more you no, know, just worried about her actual physical safety because obviously the rock through the window. She thinks it was retaliation for something that John's done. Yeah, and John even like asks about that. Do you think this is because of what I do? Yeah, uh, it's clear that she's concerned. Yeah. Um. So that's all boils over when we get to this scene, uh, you know, the, the fundraiser. And a lot, I actually really like this scene because it brought in a lot of things, some of which I'd even forgot about the first episode. The, the man killing the goat um, yeah. in the restaurant. Like I, As soon as he came out, I was like, oh yeah, this was a thing. I forgot about it because I haven't mentioned it since. Uh, the woman that's been in the wedding dress, we see her earlier on in this episode, but I was like, yeah, we did see her like mowing the lawn like back in episode one yeah. uh, and all these, all these little things and obviously the guy in the lake. It brought all these things back up. And we find out that the reason why this is happening is that on the day of the fourteenth, this guy killed a goat, and it was you know it was seen as a bad thing. They, they they put him in jail for it. It was like this you know public you know violent. They thing. got him in jail quick. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm assuming they just mean the. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming so. But... The, 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 you know the local police station with the, with the one yeah. jail cell. I don't, I don't. I mean the county lockup. Where it's, <laughs> it's the way he, you know matches yeah, security exactly prison. Like they did not give him a real trial. No. Um, I think he was been held for for questioning or. Whatever. I'll allow it. But anyway, so he comes in and, you know, Erica, like, throws off... Because like, she's basically disillusioned with this town. She's like, wait, this is bullshit. We're all celebrating. You're singing your stupid song about how we're the 9,000 and whatever. And, like, 
you know, we've just had a disappearance. Like, her illusion's been shattered that anything is special about this town. And she's like, yeah, so I think, I think his name was Jerry, which was making me laugh. I was Because I was imagining Jerry from Parson and Rec being the one who was killing a cow or a goat every day. And I thought that was funny. Um, I, oh, because you know all the, the goats that were there um, last episode, the car crash? Yeah. Well, well, they were these guy's goats. And, and ah, I assume they have the, to be. That's a lot of goats. And if he's, if he's killing them daily or in a semi-regular basis, he must have a lot of goats to, to kill. Yeah, uh, one would assume so. Uh, is, is he importing them or is he breeding these goats? Has he just got a goat farm or, or are these sourced goats? I thought if you're killing all them that quickly, you'd probably have to import some goats. Maybe, I don't know. But <laughs> so he, he comes in and he's going to kill the goat. And this is what sets her off, and she's like, yeah, because he did that on the 14th, and people are like, oh, he's some holy man, he knew something, so he sacrificed a goat, that's what saved us. Oh, you in the wedding dress, you were trying on wedding dresses at the day of departure, so now you wear it every day and take photos with tourists. Like, it's just, it's this cynicism, it's like, this is all just a lot of shit. <laughs> it's all just a lot of, a lot of, uh ceremony that doesn't really mean anything superstitious nonsense yeah you're finding meaning in things that don't have meaning um and she's like no you're not going to kill this goat enough like yeah so uh, it's this this big thing and you know john tries to calm her down and i loved especially when she turns to him and says yeah there's no miracles and miracles so why does jerry get a pass and why does he get to kill this goat i like that line i think this is especially interesting you know when she's all off in this you know this is all bullshit none of this stuff means anything but yet she has the story about the bird. Well, yeah, but I, I think that's kind of the, the point, is that for, for, she did believe, after the 14th, she believed for, you know, three plus years. Right. Until her daughter went missing. I think that's the thing. The story of the bird is like, it's not the town necessarily that's special after that happened. It was like, wait, I'm, like, I, I wished my daughter could be okay without me and that got rid of her. Like, you know, it was, it was kind of that thing of, like, making a wish, but then it's twisted and it's like, yeah, technically you got it, but... It was like, yeah. you know, in a way that's not nice. You know, it's... No, I, I just mean in the sense that she thinks she's responsible yeah. for, from that wish. Whereas here, she's saying, no, none of you are responsible for this. You didn't do anything. This was all circumstance. Well, yeah, it's because she specifically wished for something. It was, you know, it's... Yeah. You know, she, she specifically asked for it and she feels responsible. Um, but it shows her, it, but that showed her that the town wasn't necessarily special. Like, and when we see the birds early on, because, you know, at first we're like, why, why, should, why should you keep putting birds in a box and then coming back and they're dead? Like, what, what's going on here? And obviously it ties into the, the whole bird noise in the first episode that John kept hearing, and he was getting going nuts because he couldn't find it. And she's, mm. she's probably got it in a box somewhere. <laughs> probably. Uh, but, so, so she, she blows up, and no relic sees this, and she goes to see her. And this is where we get to the last, like, ten minutes of the episode. It's a really long scene. It plays. No music starts until the very end when everyone, you know, when Nora leaves, and it's just them. Um, and she's like, "Look, I got these questions, so you could look at them and feel better. And you, you don't have to be scared of these things. And it determines whether or not it's a departure. That's the whole idea. And she's like, "Well, come in and ask me them then." And I'm like, "Oh, this is fun. We get Nora doing her thing again." I, I like the idea how they're, you know, they're on the opposite sides though, because Nora mm. thinks that she's in the same place as her. She's like scared that that she hasn't really like that she's not really gone she wants to because she wants to believe they're gone because then she wants to believe that they're here so you can find them yeah but eric is like no i want this to confirm that they are gone um yeah i think just because that would give her the certainty of you know like like so it can stop all the 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 witch hunt around i don't know if i'd say she wants to know they're gone i, I don't know if i'd say that about the scene because to me to, it reaches this emotional climax, but I don't think she was trying to prove the, a point that they are gone. Like I think she just deep down believes it, and then yeah. the the questions confirm it, um, and it flips back round on Nora at the yeah. end because Nor- Nora is asking these questions and she, she's get, getting the answers, and she keeps and it gets towards the end, and she never actually confirms that the, the questions have revealed. You know, at least you know it's it's been flagged as departed, right? She never reveals that. But you can kind of get, tell from her reaction to the last few questions that, no, she's not getting the answers she wants. She wants to get the answers that say this is not a departure, but she's yeah. get, she's getting all the right ones. And particularly the, the asking the question about the last thing she's, you know, that the party said to you, and she's like, I can't remember. And then Nora like, basically gives her opinion. This is, uh, this is all bullshit. Like, you're not responsible. And it's like telling her everything she wants to hear herself. Yeah. And then... And then Erica hits back with that final question. 
she's like, you know, but you know, did they die or were they departed? And she's like, they departed. And then she asks, what was the last thing they said to you? And she can't answer. And that's the confirmation to tell us that that was the that was the response that says that means that that's more likely that they departed. Yeah, it's not you know proof, but at least in terms right. of the questions, it's, it's, it's that's the what idea it means if to it them. was something fraudulent. I yeah. think the idea is that the person who was going away would probably you know say something. Maybe not to the person they were trying to get away from, but to someone they would say something that would be important enough that it would stick with them as last words. Mm, yeah. Whereas if you can't really remember them, they were just you know all right bye you know whatever they were just re- regular conversational last words. You wouldn't think about them. Yeah, I think though there'd have to be a follow up if you do remember. Like, what was it? Because, because maybe you do remember. Okay, the last time I seen them was when they were saying bye when they were going to school. So I can just kind of remember from context. Like it was right bye. <laughs> like it's you know it's not an important statement. Um, but like, and the fact is, we've seen those like moments or final moments with the kids, and they were just kind of shouting over each other. You couldn't really make out what they were saying anyway. It was it was no, very much no. just a ramble of of noise. Uh, but I, I want to point out this 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 big scene between the two of them. Uh, the acting was phenomenal between the two. Yeah, of them. and and the way it's filmed, like the, the it's so close up on the faces. They fill it, most it, of the screen. It gets close up. It doesn't start close up. It it, it, yeah. it gradually gets more close as the thing gets more emotional, which is a very simple technique. But by the time we're getting to those last few questions, we're right in. Like we can't yeah. see the chin. We can't see the top of the and, head. And all we've got on the side is is black. It's like all the light from the rest of the room's faded. Yeah. Um. Really well done. So, so the directing really makes a point of saying that there's no music. We're not dressing this up. There's no um, fancy technique here. It's just close up. We're right in the faces, and it's just all the acting. The acting is what's doing this. And both of them, both of them do a fantastic job. You can, you can tell that Noah's trying to convince her something because she wants to convince herself of it, but Eric is not not falling for it. And she's and, you know Noah pokes holes in them because she tells the story about the bird and the, the miracles and the you know wishing and all yeah. that. It's like. It's a bit of a leap, isn't it, Erica? There's lots of holes in your theory, and it's very flimsy, and she just she just tears it to shreds, and like Erica has to fight back almost to like, don't make fun of what I believe. Like, there's clear reasons here, and it's just, yeah, it's a fantastic scene. I just oh, uh, definitely it's a standout of the episode. It's great. I mean, honestly, the next scene actually kind of like makes a a strong a strong try to try and win it. From right, it, which but... really says how strong this next scene is, given yeah. that it follows this and doesn't feel like it comes down. Do you, do you know what I like about it, though? Because obviously, so, so Nora gets upset at that last question that she can't answer. She gets really, you know, and again, the acting from Carrie Coon here is phenomenal. Uh, yeah. And uh, she... I loved the moment where she choked up when the word lens popped up. You know, she's just like, oh, did, did she wear any glasses mm-hmm. or lenses? And she kind of chokes up when she says it, because... She no, knows. She knows it's prodding at it. That was another thing I liked about the acting. Actually, is uh, as soon as she starts asking the questions, she starts. She she feels like she's putting on the same act that she did in season one when she was asking. Like she went very very stern, very professional. Right, and even when she knows the answers, she she's, asked the questions anyway. Yes, but, which and, was the same thing we saw with uh, you know, one of those first interviews we yeah, saw but, her do. But again, it was uh. In that same stern, like she knows she has epilepsy, but she says it in the exact same stern way. She doesn't like because you think, oh, she's not doing this officially right now. You think she might just, you know, say it in a nicer way, like, okay, I know the answer to this, but so it's. I think it's easier for her to cope with if she just pretends it's official. Pretty, she probably, could, yeah. She can just get through it that way. Um, but it's almost like she she tries to not feel anything for a little bit as she asks them. And it's not until the results start to give her what she doesn't want that she can't hold it back anymore and it starts to bleed through. But she gets emotional and she leaves the scene, goes back home, and Kevin's sitting there. And the music's always started up. The music started up as she was leaving. And I I feel like it's probably probably just going to wrap up now. They'll have like a little sweet moment or whatever to comfort her. But sure, she goes in and Kevin's like, they wait to talk and she's like, no, nah, can we not right now? She's upset. She doesn't want to, you know, go through it. And you know, you know what he wants to talk about. You can that, see it. He's such a mess. But that's, that's, yeah, this is the thing. Like, I think, you know, the first thing, he's, the first time he says it, it's like, oh, he wants to talk to her about her stealing some random guy's papers. Like, she wants to talk about this. He's like, I don't, and that's what she thinks. She's like, I don't want to talk about it. We'll talk about it tomorrow. I don't want to talk about it. But, yeah. And he's like, no, we need to talk right now. And I'm like, oh, no, it's not about her. You look over him, you see he's got the, the beer bottle between yeah. his legs. He's, he's peeling up the label. He's, he's yeah. shaking. It's like, it's, oh, I know what this is. Yeah, it's about him. It's not about about her and she, she she eventually gets how serious it is and i actually love that the first time he says it he's like i've been seeing someone and you can see in her face but you're cheating on me <laughs> like yeah. that's how it comes off and then he's like no no i'm seeing someone 
And I'm like, Kevin, rephrase it. God damn it. You're intentionally uh, making yeah, it sound worse. You're just repeating it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I do like that he just sort of says it again with the sort of the, the you know, the, 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 the twist on it and she just gets it. She's just like, yeah. oh, right. And then she's like, are you, who are you, who you been seeing? Look, like, uh, Patty, are you seeing her right now? Yes. And I love that it never showed her. I, yeah. and because part of me wanted it to as well like see when she said are you seeing her right now part of me expected it to go wide and see her standing behind her right i was expecting it oh. as well but i think it's it's so much smart to keep us in nora's head for this. yeah because we're, we're in nora's head for this episode uh and we're on kevin's side of this which is why i think we'll get like his side of it to explain why he gets to this breaking point where he feels he needs to tell right because because we saw like you know the, the it's, it's been building anyway the idea you know yeah. it's been being handcuffed to bed and he forgot the baby which mm. yeah not so great but, uh, and, and she catches and, him uh, well, talking to right. To she catches him talking to well to himself as he claims, and and the machine turns back on. Did 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 it just turn on, or did Patty turn that on? Like, was there something there that did it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so it's, a, it's played off. It, it just kind of like shrugs it off. But it, what I like is that as much as we talked about all oh, how that may happen, like how will someone catch him or whatever, I actually really liked it was in an episode that wasn't about him. Like I say, we're in Noah's head, we're in Noah's point of view. So when she comes into that that scene and he's talking to himself, you really feel the wait. What the hell's he doing? Like he, yeah. you really get it from her perspective. And, and it, it's also it stops it feeling like such a big thing until it gets to the end, and she has to stop and think about it because she's so caught up in her thing. Yeah, um, and that's that the other thing I like really about notice, this. Does she? Is like I say, I think we'll get Kevin's side of this and we'll prove him to this point. But I like that this we got this scene before that side of it because. To us as the audience, much like Nora, it kind of almost comes out of nowhere. It kind of comes... It's like, it's like this truck just hitting you where you, you weren't expecting. Because right, she walks in that door. You think the episode's ending. And then yeah, he we hits just with had this. that big emotional yeah. climax and we're like, okay, right, we, we're going to come down after that. But he, he starts to talk and you're like, wait a minute, he's going to tell her. He's going to tell He's telling her something important. Jesus Christ. Like It almost puts you in the same place as her where she did not expect this conversation at all. Like, she wasn't expecting yeah, this heavy... She was not prepared for this. Like, um, like I said, she wanted to wait till tomorrow just to talk about, you know, her stealing a folder. Yeah, and because of that, it has the same effect on us. We were not prepared for this scene. We knew we were probably going to get it this season, but we were not prepared to happen, to, for it to happen here. It, this just yeah. his. Um, and it's very, again, very well acted, him telling her, and it's like, oh, it started when we, you know, uh, after you moved in with the baby, and yeah, I thought it would go away when we got here. It didn't. Uh, and, and, and you you have to think does is she going you know when he says that it's mm-hmm. like when you moved in does she feel guilty is she like am i really a lens is is this adding to that uh, yeah is, is she like you, for a second is she like, the is, cause of this is she and i don't think she is for a second no but i think yeah. she'll it'll add to her guilt oh sure I sure I, I think she noticed that line i don't know like i don't know i i don't know if she honestly thinks she's the cause per se but i think she will feel she will feel insecure about it in the sense that, wait, are you unhappy? Is this happening because this life isn't for you? You don't want this, this, this. Yeah. They're not married, but this essential married life with the new baby. Like you don't actually want this family. That's why you're going through this. Is because, and mm-hmm. she, I think she'll she'll feel worried from that perspective. Like that he this started when they started doing this properly. Is yeah, this, it was it, it was when she moved in and when yeah. the baby arrived. So it's, I honestly think she'll think it's from a perspective. Oh, this is like me lensing where I'm this supernatural thing where she's right, but right. I think, but more just she'll be like, oh, this is because of me in yeah, in, but a, in some way. Yeah, but it won't be her fault. It'll just be that he maybe he doesn't want this life. He doesn't want these right. things, and it's manifesting in this way. He's having this crisis because of that, yeah. and I think she'll feel unloved as a result. Perhaps we'll see how it develops. Obviously, but. Um, and then she starts asking, "Is she speaking to you right now? What is she saying?" And what I thought like, I liked about this is that I'm like, "Yeah, that sounds like Ghost Pie. <laughs> that sounds like yeah. Ghost Pie." Because he's like, uh, he's, "She's saying that this is a mistake that I'm telling you, and that I've just made a huge, huge mistake." And yeah. I'm like, "Oh." Uh, his acting is great here oh yeah again like you know, after that last scene with the, with, you, you can you can see him trying not to look at Patty. Yeah. And yeah. he's really struggling. And he's always very emotional. It's very, like, Slackton in the last scene was phenomenal. This scene was phenomenal. And the music in this scene was building up. We had that, that theme. And eventually the tension's broke because a rock comes through the window. It's, you know, it ends with this big loud bang. And it's Erica's just thrown a rock through the window. And obviously, okay, she, the motivation here is maybe that she feels pissed about everything that she's went through next door with Nora. Mm. 
but it, maybe it's just me. Am I reading too much into this? It feels that like she knows that North through the rock. Oh, I think she does as well. Yeah. I think she's figured it out in this conversation. She she saw Nora's reactions and she's like, "Yeah, no, it was you. You're feel you're feeling this way." Yeah, um, I, I I believe that as well. I, I really feel like she knew, and I think that's why like Nora doesn't even for a second get angry and run outside and scream because she knows. Yeah, okay. she deserved it. Yeah, rock for rock. That's fair. Um, but again, I, I think that even clearly shows again like how much they're alike, and yeah. like it's, it's you know it's like it's like two. So sometimes that like, you clash with people who are the exact same as you because you can't yeah. have any leeway with each other because you're actually the exact same. It kind of feels like that where they're both in a very similar place in terms of their guilt, in terms of how they're grieving. Um, so it's, it's interesting. Now, obviously, this is where we we end the episode, but we did gloss over one fairly notable scene, which we'll be teasing on another episode. Yes. Uh, which is uh, Nora gets a phone call. And she thinks it's from the uh, the same scientist folk. Yeah, she's like, piss off. I told you not to phone her anymore. But it's Laurie. And she's smoking again, so clearly things aren't going well. And she then, like, she asks, like... And again, this is kind of a weird scene because, like... We've seen them interact briefly, like, but not, not when Laurie's been speaking. Like, how, them actually having a conversation is very much a new thing. Yeah. Uh, so it felt quite no prominent in that. And even when she mentions t- Tom... She's like, no, I've never met him. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I was never Plus, met just Tom. the fact that I think this is uh, interesting because obviously we haven't seen anything of Laurie since that episode. So we got mm. that one episode with, all right, here's what's going on. And then just this out of the blue. Again, it's this this idea that we're, we're with Nora, this is just out of the blue. It feels random almost. Like, wait, wait yeah. what's going on? Yeah, and it obviously teases these things we don't understand yet. She doesn't know where he is. She's looking for him. She's worried about him. Uh, and she said, if you see him, Tell them that I'm worried and that I'm sorry. So right away I'm like, okay, right. So their next episode, you know, whether it's next week or the right, it's after. it's got to jump back in time again, surely. Yeah. Which which is which is fine. Um, but it, it definitely, I think it's interesting though how it did that. It, this season very much feels like the Laurie and Tom stuff. They do feel more like minor characters compared to, I mean, what they've the, what got is very important, but just in the, t- in the sense that they get like a little tease before their episode, and then, but I can see them only having one more episode that's yeah. really just theirs. Well, yeah, I mean, we've only got four more in total. Yeah. Um. So one for them. One for them, we're, we're one for Kevin. We're expecting one for Kevin to go back through today. Yeah. The finale, whatever that's going to be, that just leaves one extra for whatever right. else it wants to and do. and I can't see that being Laurie again. No. No, like I say, I can see it being more of a general episode. I can see it being a John episode. John mm. makes the most sense to me to get yeah. like, focus. Finally, understanding. But that could also be the finale. Like, I could see that being the finale yeah. as the John focused episode. Like, I could see them doing that. Uh, but like certainly, like we, we kind of have what three out of four of them are probably going to be, just in terms of their focus, not really what their plot is. Um, yeah. Because uh, the, the the only way I can think there wouldn't be is if they don't show us Kevin's day today, and and we just get this we we get those you know those hints of things were getting worse and we, we saw him getting concerned and mm, and even, if they just leave it at that i don't think so if they tease it out for more than a couple of episodes that'll be the finale it'll be kevin's side of all this okay maybe, maybe we won't jump back in time and see these specific moments uh although i think we i do think we will though i feel like the way they showed parts of it in this episode really felt like it feels like we should but i'm just i'm not sure because of how you know, we've only got four episodes left. One for Laurie. I'm not sure they'll use a whole episode for that. I think it's important. I, I think his decision to do this, to, to admit this, is too important to just gloss over like that. Mm. Yeah, perhaps. It really is. It feels like something's happened. Um, and as much as he brings up the baby and he brings up, like, is that enough? Is that enough that drives him to this? I think the baby is. but like, I think that might be the, the tipping point where it's like, no, I'm putting the baby in harm now. Oh, no, it's, it's enough from a, a logic point of view, sure. But as an audience watching a TV show, is that enough for us? Is that dramatically enough for us to get to this decision? Mm. Well, that's fair. Sure, if you're a real right. person, that's probably the biggest thing you could do is put your child in harm's way. <laughs> right, which yeah. is why I feel like that, that. we know what his reason was probably in that sense. It, yeah. it might well have been just, no, but, baby's in harm. That's it. I, I can't do this anymore. But I think there's more to it than that. I think more happened that led to this decision. All right. We'll I'll be surprised. Wait, I'll be surprised if there isn't. I really will be. If it, if there's one thing I'm expecting from the rest of these episodes now this season is why did he make that choice when he did? All right, makes sense. Uh, like I, said, I I can see it, but I think there is a chance they don't. 
If they don't, it'll come up in another way. I mm. think. Okay. We'll hear a bit more. Maybe they won't jump back in time, but if they don't jump back in time, they'll be more revealed in a, and maybe in a more event of way of why. Like maybe, maybe Patty says a lot of things that sort of hint at like what the journey was. Yeah, here. yeah, it could be. But you know, we we spent the first three episodes all revolving around the same time period, so that's why I'm expecting as well for it to just give us that other side of it. Because it almost feels like it's the start of a new trilogy of that. Because the first three episodes, it was like, all right, uh, Murphy's, uh, Kevin. The whole family, arguably, and then Laurie, Tom. I feel like this, this, this Nora, Eric episode is the start of a new trilogy where we'll get then Kevin's side, and then we'll get the the Laurie, Tom. Do, or do, do we do? Versa. Does it actually parallel? Like, you know how we were saying, you know, Nora and Eric are kind of the same. Yeah. Here. Do we parallel Kevin with John in there in in maybe. one episode as well? Maybe. Again, maybe that we, could we didn't be the really finale, see no. much of John in this episode. We we saw his effects. That is but true. We didn't see much that of him. True. I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, we might jump back and see like what leads him to like beating up that guy and what he's doing otherwise. But I don't feel like I need to know that as much as I do with Kevin. No, of course not. It's more. It makes more. Just makes more sense because we've seen how angry he is. We see what he does. Yeah. Uh, we don't need that that to be explained to us in the same way. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. Uh, like, does he find out that Erica was going to leave him? Like, how how does he respond to that? Mm. You know, she's been quite cold to him. Like, you know, when he's like talking about her necklace and all yeah. that, and she was being very dismissive and no i've got it i don't need your help like it's very it, it, i mean he's really just going for a, a romantic little moment where he wants to help her put on the necklace but she's like no no, no i'm fine i got it yeah buzz off pretty much she's she's not interested at the minute is she yeah so i, I think i think you have maybe other little scenes that show that they're not in harmony actually like when the batteries she's looking for the batteries and he doesn't know where they are yeah yeah he's like oh she i jumped to go get more from the, yeah. from the shop and she's like no i've got more i just wonder where those ones were yeah uh, <laughs> are they talking about kids? Yeah, we can always make more kids, but I want to know where that one is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it works. Yeah, which I, I think that's a little poignant, actually, addition to her finding Lily out in the car before Nora comes out, or before she goes and you know gets Nora to say, "Oh, the baby was out here." And it's kind of like she's just lost a child, and you're being you really know, careless. She, yeah. she's, there's almost a, a bit of anger there. That's like you should appreciate what you've got. Which I think is why it's really effective that she learns about, you know, Nora's previous kids. Then, yes, like, yeah. you know, she's she's angry. She's like, you, really, you're gonna leave you're gonna leave a baby outside after after I've just lost mine. You know, you're gonna be that careless. And it's like, oh no, you get you actually get it. Yeah, you've lost two. Like you understand. Um, yeah, and she don't, obviously doesn't say in that scene because she asked later, are they departed or are they dead? She asked that later, but it, it's probably it, implied. it doesn't matter, does it? At, at that well, point, no, it, it doesn't it, matter. It it doesn't, but like given what she's going through and she's she thinks her daughter's departed there's this yeah. kind of that, that's kind of what she relates to in this scene when she talks to her um and i think even though she asked the question later on that's what she probably thinks happened there. she suspects that for sure yeah. yeah um so well this is an insert that we're recording after the fact because connor googled something and he's determined to add it into the review so what have you found connor i was right they're not stocks stocks are for the feet like i said these ones they're called a, a pillory Hillary is for the head and the hands. So, Nora was wrong. I don't care. I know, but it was bothering me, and I just wanted this this clear on the record. Uh, yeah. There you go. That's that's episode. What are we on six? Six, six of yeah. uh, of leftover season two. So, let us know what you thought of this one in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. You can get some bonuses over there, including these leftover reviews a week early. Um, but otherwise, guys, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV, and we'll see you next time.